Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, today we're going to be talking, I'm, I don't talk about the comment section that much anymore, but we're going to do a comment section, Jesus is not Almighty God. But before we get into this, uh, and before we get into a hymn, I got this letter, I got this in the mail, it's kind of a letter, but it's almost like a little postcard, but basically it's Jehovah's Witness, and they're hitting me up with, you know, uh, and it seems so nice, think, it says thinking of you, and it goes through saying, Jehovah, the God of the Bible, the Bible, which one? They don't say. They just start quoting from their Bible perversion, the uh, New World Translation. But the whole point of this is, brothers and Christ, the enemy seems to be still working overtime to mislead people and to keep people from getting saved. Brothers and Christ, we need to get out there. We need to get out there and give out gospel tracts, mail out gospel tracts if you can. Uh, we need to get more active for witnessing for Jesus Christ. Okay, the enemy is going hardcore. We need to get as hardcore as the, uh, if not more hardcore than the enemy when it comes to laying gospel tracts everywhere, handing out gospel tracts, being a living witness and a verbal witness. I'm not saying being an evangelist. We're not all called to be an evangelist, but we are all called to be a living witness and a verbal witness. And um, this channel, we just put out the last video that the Lord blessed me with finally getting the gospel, this gospel track I keep showing everybody over the last few couple of years. Um, I got it back on a PDF file, which I can share, and I have been sharing it with brethren uh, through email. But we need to get back out there, brother, says Christ, the enemy is back out there. Now the reason I bring this up for this study is because at first I thought I was talking to a Jehovah's Witness, but more than anything, I think... I could be talking to a Jehovah's Witness, but he's using multiple Bible versions as we're going to get in here. Multiple Bible versions. Then he starts pushing Yeshua to replace Jesus with Yeshua. And it's like maybe he's just part of that Yeshua movement, the Yahashua, the Yeshua, where they're, they're against Jesus Christ, the name Jesus Christ. And even if they want to say, well, yeah, Yeshua is God, Jesus is God. But they try to get away from the name Jesus and replace it with Yeshua and Yeshua and try to say it was just like saying um, Jehovah. It's just saying God. They're trying to do away with Jesus being God by replacing Jesus, the name Jesus with other names. Okay. But let's get into this. Uh, let's start with a hymn that kind of lines up with what we're going to be going through here today. Let's see if I can get this. Okay. Remember, comment section. Jesus is not Almighty, capital G, God. And we're going to go through uh, how I went back and forth with a, a, per, a person online and where I failed. And I'm going to talk about this, where I, I broke my own rules and I failed. <laughs> okay, and we're going to get into this. But this hymn really strikes home to what we're going to be talking about in this study. Okay, The name of the hymn is Jesus name above all names okay let's see if i can sing this morning <laughs> forgot to bring my water in here so please forgive me jesus name above all names beautiful savior glorious lord emmanuel God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living Word. Jesus, Lord God Almighty, wonderful Counselor, light of the world, the Prince of Peace. Hope of glory, man of sorrows, Lamb of God. Okay. Jesus, name above all names. We're going to get into that first. I chose this one, and I can only find the first stanza, but I, had, I saw some people, they added a second stanza, and you can add three or four stanzas to this hymn, just going through the King James Bible, God's Perfect Written Word, and getting all the different titles and what Jesus was called, you know. He was called Everlasting Father. You can get a stanza that has Everlasting Father, okay. 
Hope of Glory is there and Prince of Peace is there, but they don't like that Everlasting Father title because then it proves that Jesus is God the Father manifest in the flesh. And more, and so on and so on. So, Jesus, name above all names, I like that hymn. We did a, we did a study on that hymn actually. Well, we went through all those titles that were in there, both stanzas, and we showed where it's actually in the Bible, where Jesus is called those things. Okay? He is called the Lord, He's, he's Lord God Almighty. Okay? So this isn't going to be a hardcore study. We have other hardcore studies on the Godhead versus the Trinity, and Jesus being God, the Father, manifest in the flesh. Jesus is the person of the Godhead. What's the Godhead real quick? Let's go over real quick. What's the Godhead? The Godhead in the King James Bible, summing it up, the Godhead is God the Father, the one true God. There's only one capital G, God the Father, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. But to us, I always got to say that, I got corrected. But to us, there's but one capital G, God the Father. Those who are truly saved and born again. Those who are lost believe in the pagan trinity of uh, multiple gods that make up one God. Okay, that's not someone that has the Holy Spirit in them. We're going to get into that a little bit more. Because I believe that some people can be misled that are saved, and I believe some are just flat out lost. And we'll talk about this, because some people were arguing over whether uh, the Godhead versus the Trinity is a 100% salvation issue. All the time, you're lost all the time if you defend the Trinity. Well, a lot of us that had our eyes opened to the true Godhead that we, we believed to begin with, but decided we're just going to speak the God, we're going to just say it the way the Bible says it, we weren't lost. So not everybody that's lost that pushes the Trinity is lost. And we'll get into that a little bit further. But what's the true Godhead of the King James Bible? God the Father and the person, singular, of Jesus Christ. Body, soul, and spirit. God the Father is the soul. Jesus is the body. The Holy Spirit is the spirit. And it says in Him, talking about Jesus Christ, in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Jesus Christ, you have God the Father in him, you have the Holy Spirit in him, and he's the body. He's the body of God, he's the flesh of God, he's the image of God, he's the person singular of God. That's the Godhead. Now, we're not going to go into the Godhead. We have lots of videos on this channel where we actually go into the Godhead. Okay? But you got these people out there, part of false religions, almost all the false religions don't believe that Jesus Christ is, is God the Father manifest in the flesh? They don't believe it. So I had, I put out uh, uh, Peter Ruckman's, uh, for, oh, first before we do 2 Timothy, before I get into the comments, 2 Timothy, it's very important. And this warning is for me. I, I put this in there for me to read. So when I did this study, I'd read it and it would help keep me with the right attitude and the right demeanor, you know. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23. Chapter 2, 2 Timothy. Verse 20, 2, verse 23. Mm -hmm. The first thing I want to start with, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they, they do gender strife. First thing I failed to do, Brother Sister Christ, when I gave you that encouragement, and I gave you... Uh, was it uh, an exhortation, a teaching saying, this is the way we deal with people. When someone out of the blue shows up and says, hey, I'm one of you. I'm a Christian. I'm in Christ. I'm a Christian. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. Now, this man doesn't believe, profess to be a Bible-believing Christian. But when anybody tries to come up to you and says, hey, I want to talk to you about thus saith the Lord, there's three tests they need to pass. And I didn't push this guy through those three tests. I skipped the three tests and got into an argument of whether or a discussion, whether, because I wasn't arguing, but whether uh, Jesus is Lord God, is God Almighty, Almighty God. I got into a discussion, and I just totally ignored the three word, rules that I warned you about, Brother Christ. The three rules, the th I mean, the three tests, I'm sorry, not three rules, but there are three rules, three tests that you give somebody. First, you start with final authority. What's their final authority? You test them, and you talk with them and say, hey, what's your final authority? If their final authority is not the King James Bible, then that's, what you, that's the only thing you talk about, is what the final authority is. And if the King James Bible is not their final authority, there's a 9.999999999%, I'll leave that 1.000001% for error, chance they don't have the right gospel either. They don't. 
That's the second test. Let's say, oh yeah, you have someone saying, I believe the King James Bible. I'm a King James Bible believer. Then you do the second test. Do you believe the true plan of salvation? Repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. And after God saves you, you have a new birth. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You have a new life. A changed life. And that life is in Christ. He cleans up your life. You start representing Jesus Christ, putting on that breastplate of righteousness, putting on Jesus' righteousness. You start representing Jesus Christ, be ye holy for I am holy. Saint, we went through all that about being in Christ, made into us wisdom. You start fearing God, and you start loving God by keeping His word. Um, righteousness, made into us righteousness. You start putting on that breastplate of righteousness, you're an ambassador for Jesus Christ. You start, you start being a good representation of who Jesus really is, being a servant of Jesus Christ. Sanctification, God gets sin out of your life. There's backpedaling. You can fall back. I have. Okay? You can struggle with the flesh. You're going to struggle with the flesh to the day you die. But there's going to be, remember we said, two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. That's someone who's saved. You see them moving towards God, trying their best to live a life of Christ, trying to sanctify their life. But they're struggling with the flesh. And some people really fail sometimes when they struggle with the flesh and give in to the flesh. But there's still that moment, movement forward, the changed life, the new creature in Christ Jesus. When you have someone say, oh, I'm saved, and they do 180 and run 100 miles in the other direction, that's where John talks about if they were of us, they would no doubt remain with us. That's where Paul starts doubting people's sal salvation, saying, are we to sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how are we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Right? Sanctification and then redemption, the motivation that gets us to live a life of Christ. Okay? Their gospel, if they don't have, if they don't believe the King James Bible is God's perfect written word, there's a huge chance they don't have the right gospel. Okay? And if they're messed up on any one of these two, that's the only two things you talk to them about. You keep bringing them back to the King James Bible as God's perfect written word, the final authority, and here's the gospel from God's perfect written word, the final authority. And if you don't do it this way, you will never get saved. You'll never go to heaven. And you stick with those two things. And let's say they pass those things. I've had someone pass those two tests. And I threw in the third one because I end up talking forever and forever with somebody about the uh, post-trib. I'm a King James Bible believer, and it sounded like he was, and then he said that uh, he, we went over the gospel, he had the proper gospel, but he believed in post-trib and rejected uh, the day of Christ, the day of redemption, uh, being caught up, that blessed hope, being caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. He rejected it, and as we got into study, I wasted so much time trying to prove that, that the catching away happens before the time of Jacob's trouble, and what I really should have been proving is dispensational teaching. I should have stuck with dispensational teaching to let him know that, because he kept grabbing from different dispensations trying to say it applies to today when it doesn't. So that's the third test you need to do. If they pass the first two tests, you do the third test. Okay? Are you dispensational? If you're not, that's all I'm going to talk about is, how, is what, what it means to be dispensational and how messed up you'll get if you're not dispensational. 2 Timothy 2.15, rightly dividing the word of truth. When you study it, you're to rightly divide it. Okay? Uh, the dispensation of the grace that's given to me to you word. How God disp disp dispenses His grace today is not the same way He dispensed it in the early book of Acts. It's not the way He dispensed it when Jesus was here in His earthly ministry. It's not the same way He dispensed it in the Old Testament. It's not going to be the same way He dispenses it in the time of Jacob's trouble or the day of the Lord. Okay? There's different dispensations on how to find God's grace and get saved. Okay? That being said, you got those three, those three tests. I failed. <laughs> I, for, I guess I was bored that day. I just really wanted to fight for God's word. But as you're going to find, I made mistakes. Because bottom line, we don't have the same authority. And when you don't have the same authority, what we just read there in 2 Timothy 2.23, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. When you don't have the same authority... All you're going to do is have quite, both of you are going to keep throwing each, we're going to find out here, just throw questions back and forth. And I did my best to answer the questions. This man ignored a lot of my questions. <laughs> he wouldn't answer them because he couldn't. 
Um, but all you're doing is you're going to go back and forth and you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time if you don't have the same authority, the final authority. Those are the three tests, but it's just Christ when someone new comes in. If they pass those three tests, I'll talk about it with the brother or sister in Christ about anything in the Bible. You fill any one of those three things, that's the only three things I'll talk about. Bible ver the final authority, the Bible version issue, the true plan of salvation, and dispensational teaching. It's the only three things I'll talk to you about if you fail one of those. You've got a false gospel. Faith alone, false gospel. Oh, you can use any Bible versions. This guy uses multiple Bible versions. I won't talk to you about anything else. I should have been talking to him about who Jesus is. This man is clearly clueless on who Jesus is. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Verse 23, we'll read it again. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing they do gender strife. You need to have the same foundation. And the person asking the questions, you need to make sure that they're asking questions because they want answers not asking questions just to ask just to ask questions you know I don't want the truth I just want to mess you up that kind of person and that's what I'm getting here verse 24 and the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men apt to teach and patient now this is where I as we get in here you're gonna see I failed a little bit because I wasn't I, I, I could have it could have sound like I'm coming across as a jerk a little bit I could I'm not purposely trying to, but instead of trying to plead with them in a teaching way, saying, here's the truth, you need to accept the truth, you're going to go to hell if you don't accept the truth. It's the same thing with these uh, faith alone people, that free grace, faith alone, easy believism. And I'm like, if you don't accept the true plan of salvation, in other words, they take repentance out, and there's no changed life after salvation. These people are on their way to hell, and my desire is to see them get saved. But there's some times where I just, either I'm having a bad day, or the flesh gets the better of me, and I start being a jerk, or start being prideful in how I go about it, and that's not how we're supposed to be. Gentle on all men, and we're supposed to be apt to teach. When you see someone's wrong, you're, you're, you need to get into teaching mode. I need to teach them what's right, not just... Like what's on YouTube nowadays where you're just trying to school people, as they say. Or, oh, you got him, or he got you, and he schooled you. And, he, and it's like debating, and you're just arguing, and you're just trying to basically put the person down and tear the person down. and Oh, I destroyed him. I destroyed him. That kind of attitude. It's like, no. When we see that there's someone wrong, whether it's a false convert, a wolf in sheep's clothing, or even a brother in Christ that's gone astray, we need to get into teaching mode. And our teaching mode is based on, I want to see that person get back up on, the, on their feet. I want to see them get saved. If they're not saved, I want to see them get back on the right path and get their walk with the Lord going again if they are saved. You want to see them get built back up. You're not there just to destroy them completely. Okay. Uh, apt to teach and you have to be patient. Don't lose your temper. Don't mouth off, you know. Backbiting, whispering, um, it's in the Bible, but mouthing off, what I'm talking about is mocking, name-calling. Mocking and name-calling. You have to be patient. Verse 25 says, In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. That's what we want them to do, to acknowledge the truth. And if you attack them, they put up a shield and they won't listen. Give them repentance and acknowledging of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. And we're going to see this person's gotten taken in the snare of the devil. He doesn't know Jesus Christ. He's worshiping Satan as a Christ, an antichrist. But he doesn't know the real Jesus Christ to the King James Bible. That they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. That's our desire. Who are taken captive by him at his will. We want to see people get saved. We want to see people get back on the right path. And that we need to start acting like it. It's not about just tearing people down and just, you know, just trying to destroy people. So when I'm going through this, it's to remind me, hey, I get frustrated because I don't like it when people attack my Lord and Savior and when they, when they mess up the true, perfect, written Word of God. But I need to understand that this guy's lost. He's on his way to hell. He has no clue who real Jesus Christ is. He has no clue who, who, who he claims Jehovah a lot. He has no clue who Jehovah is. He doesn't. He's worshiping a false god. And who's the lowercase g god of this world? Satan. 
So sorry for that little bit of intro, but that was for me as much as it is for you, Brothers Jesus Christ. Remember the three tests, and remember when you see someone's in error, you need to get into teaching mode. Okay? Teaching mode. As a father would a son, or as a mother would a daughter, we need to get into teaching mode to get them back on the right path. Get them saved if they're lost. Get them back on the right path if they're lost, if they're saved, and they've lost their way. Right. So, uh, I was watching, I put out, uh, let's see, comments under, I did an intro to videos about the Godhead versus the Trinity. Intro video. And someone came on and made a comment saying, Many have been deceived. Jesus is not Almighty God. And then he quotes Jeremiah 9, 6. And he puts in brackets, Aramaic Bible in plain English. In plain English. This isn't plain English? Yes, it is. Brothers of Christ, I, I hate when they say, right. I'm trying to you know, be humble, but Brothers of Christ, when I was lost, it's a spiritually discerned book. I did think this was kind of archaic, kind of out of date and everything. But when God saved me, and I followed a, a ministry where uh, my, I used to call him a mentor until he fell away and gotten into the world, and now he's so lost and so distracted by the world. He taught me how to read this book. He taught me that it's spiritually inspired. And God taught me through this man. Okay? And after I got saved, I, we did this study on how to start your day. There's times where you're going to read this book and you might not understand it at first. But you keep reading it, you keep praying over it, and over time, this book is so... Now that I'm saved, born again, I've been studying this book for 10 years, this book is easy to read. It's easy to understand. I can say that now because I'm saved, born again, and I've been in it for 10 years. Okay, 2 Timothy 2.15, study. But these people keep acting like this isn't the plain English we should be following. We should follow this version. The NIV is the plain English. Or the New American Standard is the plain English. Or I prefer the New King James Bible is the plain English. And, you know, for the first time, it's written in a language you can understand. And all that garbage. So that was like a kick to me and everybody else out there. And I just, I didn't like it. I didn't like that kick. The Aramaic Bible in plain English. And, it's, and this is not the King James Bible. We'll get to what the King James Bible actually says. It says, your dwelling is within deceit, and their treachery they did not choose to know me, says Lord Jehovah. And when we get into the King James Bible, they are, they're adding Jehovah to a lot of places. So like I said, I thought this was Jehovah's Witness, because Jehovah's Witness would actually do away with capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, or they'll say Lord Jehovah. But they try to get rid of any time it takes, it says Lord, lowercase, capital L, lowercase O-R-D, they'll replace it with Jehovah. Because they don't want Jesus being referred to as God. Okay. But he quotes that. So, if you watch that video that I linked before this, or that I uploaded before this, Why I'm Not a Jehovah's Witness by 33rd Book, he gave me some good verses. He gives a lot of people good verses in their translation, the New World Translation, but also in the King James Bible where it says that Jesus is God the Father. Manifest in the flesh. He is God Almighty. The Almighty God. And here's one of them. So in the King, I put in the King James Bible, this is where I started to be a little bit more like a jerk, but it's truth. But in the King James Bible, God's perfect written word, not some Catholic Bible perversion. <laughs> that's why I, And that's what it comes down to real quick before I get back into this. We need to have a final authority. And if they if you both don't have the same final authority, you're not you're never gonna go get anywhere with them. Same thing with people, even people who profess to be King James Bible believers, these faith alone people who love their pagan trinity, they love adding to this book and subtracting from this book left and right, you almost never get anywhere with them. Why? Because this isn't their final authority. They have no problem adding to this and subtracting to this as they see fit. It's hard dealing with people like that. We have to go fishing, you know, with like a Peter where Jesus said, I'll make you fishers of men, we throw a little truth out there and see who wants it. And sometimes you catch something like this guy right here who doesn't want the truth, but they want to fight and argue, and it's one of those fish that are bad fish, and you got to throw it back, because <laughs> it's, 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 he didn't really want the truth. So then you throw out the line again, and we keep fishing for those people who want the truth. And that's what we keep going for. But I said in Revelation verse 1, you can look up Revelation chapter 1. 
Uh, remember, you can pause the video and turn. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, we read, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the capital L, lowercase r-d, Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the capital A Almighty. Almighty God. Okay. So I, I quoted that one, and then I jumped down and said, go down to verse 18, Revelation 1, 18. It says, I am he that liveth. The I am he is, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty, Almighty God. Verse 18 says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and death. I am he that liveth and was dead? I said, this is clearly talking about God. They're his Jehovah, God Almighty, Jehovah. And I'm not, like I said, I gotta be careful how I say it. Jehovah is a title for God, but they like to replace every name of God with Jehovah. And act like there is no other name but Jehovah. And we're going to get to that verse, because he gets to that verse. But this is clearly talking about God. What he calls Jehovah. So when did Jehovah die? When did God die? We're going to get to his answer, okay? Uh, spoiler alert, he didn't answer it. He didn't answer it. He admits Romans chapter 1, verse 8 is talking about Jehovah, God Almighty. But then he doesn't talk about verse 18. He ignores it like it doesn't exist. You ever come across those people? Well, I don't like what it says, so I'll just pretend like it doesn't exist. Like in the end of the book of Acts where Paul says, I kept nothing back from you for the faith alone, people. I kept nothing back from you. I have taught you everything when it comes to the gospel. And he says how it was repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Two things. Notice faith there isn't alone. It's repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what they do? They act like it doesn't exist. The axe rode to hell. And then we hit Romans up. And we show there's repentance. Romans axed, uh, Romans rode to hell. Then we show them in Corinthians where there's repentance. Oh, the Corinthians rode to hell. Everything's a road to hell when they don't like what the Bible actually says. And they say, oh, you're just being dramatic. No, I'm not. These people love to, ignore, not just him, but people who or aren't true Bible believers love to ignore the Bible when they feel like it. I've known brethren to do it when there's disagreements on things like holidays. I call them holidays. Like holidays, what true liberty is in the Bible. When they want to hide sin or justify sin, they'll mess up the Word of God or ignore what the Bible actually says. That's me getting, I'll get off my high horse. But you see there, I'm getting ahead of myself again, but later on he'll, he'll ignore Revelation 1.18 like it doesn't exist. Then I threw out Acts 20.28. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Some of you might know this one by heart. It says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of capital G God. There's only one capital G God, the Father. This is talking about Jehovah. The great I am. The almighty God. Feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. And I turned around and I asked him, when did God's blood get shed, slash spilled? When did God bleed? If Jesus isn't God Almighty, when did God Almighty bleed? When did he die? And when did he bleed? This is important, brother says Christ. For us, it's so important because the Jesus that died for me is God the Father manifest in the flesh. God sacrificed His Son on the cross, His own body. And it was God the Father's blood that was shed on the cross. Okay. Why is it so important? And many more verses that prove that Jesus is God the Father manifest in the flesh. He is the image of God, the body slash flesh of God, the person of God. If Jesus is not God, it was not God's blood that was shed on the cross then his blood can do nothing for you. We learn that in the book of Hebrews. Without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. And it says that the blood of bulls and goats could not take sin away. It can only cover them. It takes God's blood to take your sins away. To wash them away. 
We learn this in the book of Hebrews. And if Jesus is not God the Father, his blood can do nothing for you. If he's not the body of God, the image of God, the flesh of God, he can do, his blood can do nothing for you. Nobody can get saved. Everyone's destined to go to hell. Praise be to God that he's shown us, brothers and sisters, Christ, the th true authority, the, the Bible version issue, and the true plan of salvation where we worship a God, Jesus Christ, who is God the Father manifest in the flesh, and it was God's blood that was shed on the cross. My sins are washed away. I told him to turn from your pagan antichrist that is not God, capital G God, and turn to Jesus Christ who is God fully and completely. And I told him to repent and believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. Time is running out. And I linked the gospel message that was on the channel. And here it is. I said, P.S. Jeremiah 9, 6. Remember he quoted, he quoted a Bible perversion, an Aramaic Bible in plain English. Your dwelling is in deceit. In, in their treachery they did not choose to know me, says Lord Jehovah. Here in Jeremiah 9, 6, God's perfect written word, final authority, says thine habitation, not dwelling, habitation, well it's the same thing, words have meaning, is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit, because remember it's in the midst of deceit, we're talking about deceit, and over here he goes in their treachery, he, now he goes to talk about treachery versus deceit, they're two different things. In the midst of deceit, through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the capital L, capital R, capital O, uh, capital O, capital R, capital D, Lord. Word Jehovah is not there. 1 Corinthians 12, 3 says, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man say that Jesus is the capital L, Lord, Lord God Almighty, but by the Holy Ghost. People say, well, you're adding the word all, Lord God, you're adding the word God Almighty to this. No, in the Old Testament, when you get to uh, Jehovah, when the first time it's mentioned, he says, by my name, mighty God, was I known, but by my name, Jehovah, was I not known. Mighty God? What did they call him in the Old Testament? We're going to get to that. But they called him Lord before that. They didn't say Almighty God. They said Lord, capital L, Lord. All caps or capital L with lowercase r, d, Lord. What are they saying? Almighty. Almighty God. Okay. But you see here, what they're doing, what he's doing here, is he's tearing down Jesus Christ and calling Jesus accursed. And it's really going to sink in as we get on, get moved down with this discussion. Get onto it with more and more. It's like, he really tears Jesus down. <laughs> so much that he makes Jesus equal to Satan. He does. Let's keep going here. All right. So then he responds back with, this is what he responds back with. Capital L Lord is a title. Sarah called Abraham capital L Lord. And you know what he decides to do here? He decides to throw my, my what I call the final authority, the King James Bible. He thinks he's going to throw it right back in my face. And he says, King James Bible, 1 Peter 3, 6, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him lowercase l Lord. Lowercase l Lord. Not capital L. He said she called him capital L, Lord. No, she did not. He lied. Intentionally, or he was just parroting talking points. I don't know. Like PWC, Polly won a cracker. He just parrots what someone told him to say. He's got no um, discernment of his own. He says, even today, people in positions of authority are called Lord so-and-so. Now, that's true. Okay, the way our sentence structure works, that if Lord's at the beginning of a, of a sentence, you capitalize any word that's at the beginning of a sentence. If someone decides we're going to take Lord and make it a title and put it before someone's name, since names are a proper pronoun, they capitalize it, they turn around and capitalize the L Lord. I believe they never should. I believe it's wrong for anybody to capitalize the word Lord and put it before their name. I really do. But he's going back to how the world does things. How does the Bible do it? See, this, once again, brothers of Christ, it comes down to, we have a final authority. And that's what I always keep hitting the brother out. Maybe that's why I don't get attacked as much anymore. 
because they kept trying to get me to be go off of me as the final authority or traditions of men or philosophy or something and I keep putting them back to this saying this is the final authority take it or leave it and they don't like it they don't like it but first he's using Bible perversion and then you're gonna find out he's gonna be using tons of Bible versions then he tries to throw the version uh, the King James Bible the authorized version 1611 he tries to throw it back in my face see you're wrong Steele. you're wrong and he misuses it then he goes to the traditions of men the rudiments of the world well this is how the world always does it so it must that must be the same way the Bible does it no we do go here first not the world this is our final authority not the world mm -hmm. He says, Jesus is capital L Lord, or Master, but he is not Almighty God. And then he quotes Psalms 83, 18 in the King James Version. <laughs> this book right here. To try to think, oh, I gotcha. Uh, chapter, Psalms 83, not chapter, but Psalms 83, 18. That men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah art the most high over all the earth. And he says, Jehovah alone is God. No, but here's the thing. If you get the context of it, Paul, uh, the whole psalm, I was about to say Paul, but uh, King David. King David is comparing all these false gods and these people coming in to, to attack him. And you read all about how the, the Jews keep going for the false gods around them and treating these false gods as if they're Jehovah. What this is saying is that only the one true God, the Lord God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great I Am, okay, creator of heaven and earth, only He can have the name Jehovah, not those false gods. That's what this is saying, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, not their false gods, they're not Jehovah, not, not the false gods of the Trinity, the pagan Trinity. They're not Jehovah. That's not Jehovah. Only thou, O Lord, art Jehovah. Thou alone art Jehovah. That's what he's saying. He's not saying we can only use the name Jehovah and that's it. You can't, you can't use any other titles whatsoever that's in the Bible here, in the perfect written word of God. You know, we just went through where Jesus was called, uh, Jesus' name above all names. But God, the I am, Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. He's claiming to be God manifest in the flesh. He's God Almighty. They don't like this. As long as he didn't claim to be Jehovah, it's all good. Because they take that verse and they, they misuse it. It's saying that if anybody uses the title name Jehovah, there's only one person that can use it. It's a name. There's only one person that's Jehovah alone, and that's God Almighty. That's God Almighty. Right? But he's saying, no, no, no. That's the only name slash title we're allowed to use for God. That's not what it's saying. That's someone who just wants to believe what he wants to believe. Right? I responded to him with John 1.1. 1, 1. You guys remember John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was a capital W word. And the capital W word was with capital, D, capital G God. And the capital W word was capital G God. The same was in the beginning with capital G God. I have to keep saying this so you guys can understand. There's a capital G God and there's lowercase g gods. There's capital W word and there's lowercase w word in the Bible. All things were made by Him, the capital W word, referencing Jesus Christ. And it says Jesus Christ is God. Okay. All things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Just like this person. Just like a lot of the faith alone people out there. A lot of the false religions out there. Bible perversions. The Trinitarians. They don't know who Jesus is. The real Jesus Christ. They don't know him. Now here's the thing. I remember he tried to throw the King James Bible at me. Remember that because as we get further down, when he goes to correct me on this, he doesn't like using the King James Bible. He's like, well, I was going to use the King James Bible when it tells me something I think I want to hear, but when it says what I don't want to hear, let me grab this version. And when this version doesn't tell me what I want to hear, I'm going to grab this version over here, and then I'm going to grab this one. 
what's going on here? This man is his own final authority. He has no true final authority. He just wants what he wants. He's going to believe what he's going to believe. And he's going to try to find anything that will back it up. He has no final authority other than himself. Okay. But I put it here, capital W word equals Jesus Christ. Lowercase w word is the written word. Man spake in times past as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Paul talks about how the oracles of God have been committed to the Jews. Everyone who, every person who wrote something in this book is a Jew. Okay. The word is the written word. I, mean, I said, hmm, you can reject the real Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, manifest in the flesh all you want, but there's coming a day where you can't reject him anymore. And I'll quote some verses on it, but before we do, I, started, I stopped here and said, capital L, Lord, is Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. Not like your lie about Sarah calling Abraham, capital L, Lord. Capitals matter. I remember talking with someone on here, it's a whole other conversation, where I asked him, I said, does the capital W and word and the capital L, Lord, mean anything? And the guy came back and said, capital Lowercase or capital doesn't mean anything. And I think he caught himself putting his foot in his mouth, a servant of Satan, and he's like, he deleted the whole conversation so I could never use it as, a, as an instruction tool to say, hey, don't make this mistake, you know. Get into a debate. I shouldn't be getting into this with this guy. I should just simply be linking him, which I do at the very end. I should be just linking him the Bible version issues. That's his first step to finding absolute truth. He needs to realize that there is a perfect written word of God out there in English today, and it's the King James Bible. Been proven time and time again. I know I use the word prove, but people don't care for proof. They care about feelings and opinions. Instead of proving it, did I feel it? Did I make them feel it that it's the word of God? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But I said, capital of the Lord is, is for Jesus Christ. And Abraham called, uh, Sarah never called Abraham, capital L, Lord. And I went and re-quoted the verse again. 1 Peter 3, 6, Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him lowercase L, Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Lowercase L, Lord, not capital L, Lord. There's a difference. He doesn't want there to be a difference. Why? Because Jesus Christ is called capital L, Lord. They don't want that to be a difference. Capital L, Lord, lowercase L, Lord, ah, oh, it doesn't mean anything. They're just saying he's a master. Then why is it when Jesus wanted to use the word master, he said master instead of Lord? Call no man your master. Someone came up to him and said, good master. They didn't call him Lord, capital L, Lord, almighty God. They called him good master. And he says there's none good but God that's in heaven. There's a distinction, but they don't want Jesus to be called God Almighty, Almighty God, even though He is. Uh, Genesis 15.2, Genesis in the Old Testament 15.2. This is what I was talking about when finally comes up with Jehovah to let us know that Jehovah is a title for God, a name of God, not title, I'm sorry, name of God, that before times by Almighty God was I known, but by the name Jehovah was I not known. But if you go back in the old times, Genesis 15, 2, you see here, and Abraham said, Lord God. He didn't, he didn't say All my, the Almighty God. He said, Lord God. What does Lord God mean? Almighty God. Capital L, Lord. Capital L, not lowercase L. Capital L, Lord God. What will thou give me, seeing I go childless? Genesis 15, 8, you jump down to 8, and he said, and he said, capital L, lowercase o-r-d, God. Because some people will argue that all caps, yeah, that's talking about God the Father. Uh, capital L and lowercase o-r-d is still talking about God the Father in the Old Testament. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? Genesis 8, 3 says, and he said, my capital L, Lord. And he's talking to God. Almighty, Jehovah, the great I am. And many more. I could have kept going. We could, I could have gone crazy. Sometimes I do sometimes go crazy with tons of verses. But it said, and many more. Nowhere in the perfect written word of God, KJV, is capital L, Lord, a reference to anyone but God in the Old Testament. Well, no, capital L, Lord, just means master. We, we've always used it for anybody. It, just, it can be used for anybody. 
Not according to this book, because this is my final authority. I will never call anybody in this world a capital L Lord. They're a lowercase L Lord. He is capital L Lord of lowercase lords, Jesus is. He's capital K King of lowercase kings. Why don't they do the same thing with capital K King versus lowercase K King? They won't. Okay. Okay. So Jesus is always Lord in the Old Testament. Remember what I said? Capital L Lord is Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. Not like your lie about Sarah. Oh no, back up here. But there's coming a day. You can reject the real Jesus Christ, but there's coming a day. Capital L Lord is a reference to God the Father. Being Almighty God. Not just a master, but He's Almighty. He's above all. Romans 14, 11 says, For it is written, As I live, saith the capital L Lord, capital L, lowercase r-d, Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to capital G, God. Time and time again, the Bible says there's one God, one God, one God. Who's that one God? 1 Corinthians 8, 6. But to us, there's but one capital G, God, the Father. So when it says the Lord... So I confess to God, what they'll say is, is that capital L, Lord? Well, that's talking about Jehovah. Let's keep going, verse 12. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to capital G, God. Jehovah. God the Father. Now there's a problem with this. If they're saying, well, yeah, they'll, yeah, that's Jehovah, that's God the Father. Now turn to Philippians 2. Keep your finger there in Romans 14, 11. Now turn to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who's being in the form of capital G God, not a God, of God, the Father. There's only one capital G God, the Father. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Body and soul are connected, they are one. But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. He was made in the likeness of men. Let that, this, is, this is another study we talked about a lot of times in the past. In the Old Testament, God had an incorruptible body. God gave up his incorruptible body and came in the likeness of sinful flesh. Yes, he was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. That body, when he was born of a virgin Mary, it was created. But God had an incorruptible body that was there from the beginning. We just read that in John 1.1. 1, 1. Jesus was there at the beginning in his incorruptible body. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He gave up that incorruptible body, that perfect body. And he came in the likeness of sinful flesh, where he gets tired, he gets hungry, he gets tempted. Now the sins of the world can be put upon him on the cross. It wouldn't have worked if he had his incorruptible body, his perfect body. Remember, this corruption must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. This corruption must put on incorruption. There's no way he could have taken on the sins of the world if he kept his old incorruptible body. He had, to, he had to come in a corruptible body, likeness of sinful flesh. But the Bible says he became sin who knew no sin. He was perfect. He still remained perfect and true, sinless and true to God. Verse 8, And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto the death, even the death of the cross. Remember what we read? Revel, uh, Revelation chapter 1, who was dead and is now alive, and it's talking about God the Father. And being obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. It's above Jehovah. Let that sink in for people like this. All you people, Jehovah's Witness and and all these Yeshua, Yeshua, and trying to say, you know, Yahweh, and, and getting away with Yahweh, Jehovah, saying Jehovah, and trying to get rid of the name, the, the name Jesus. That name Jesus is above all names. That the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. They have to confess that Jesus Christ is capital L, Lord, God Almighty. That He's God manifest in the flesh. That's what it means to confess that He's Lord. Now remember we just read there. 
that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Romans 14, for as written as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. The one and the same. Here in Romans they'll say, yeah, that's Jehovah. But over here, oh no, that's just, you know, that's just Jesus, you know, a separate God or, or just, you know, a, a, a holy being or a perfect being. To, it's just someone who's separate from God the Father. No, they're one and the same. That the, at the, the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow at things in heaven and things in earth. Things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. At the name of Jesus, not Jehovah, Jesus. Not Yahshua, Joshua, Yeshua. Not Yahweh, Jesus. All right. And a brother brought up a point here saying, does, Je does Jehovah bow before Jesus? If it's God in three persons, does the person of God, the Father, bow to lowercase g, God the Son? There's no capital G, God the Son. There's only one capital G, God the Father. So they turn Jesus into a lowercase g, God. Does God the Father bow to Jesus Christ? If they're two separate persons, which is paganism, which is Satanism, does God the Father bow to Jesus Christ? They were one and the same. You don't bow to yourself. You're one and the same. Right. But you'll see that, that Romans 14, 11 and Philippians 2, 5, once again, it's talking about Jesus Christ. And there's a verse in there that says, No man, I might be getting ahead of myself, but no man said, called Jesus Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. We did that one. Accursed, and no man say that he's the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. When it says the Lord, because someone tried to do that challenge saying, well, I've seen these people say the Lord. Anybody can say the Lord, lost and saved. But, it, but unto us, unto us, there's only one capital G, God the Father. And one capital L, Lord, Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. It takes the Holy Spirit to say, yep, Jesus is God the Father manifest in the flesh. It takes the Holy Spirit to do that. When someone comes along and says, God the Son is not God the Father. You're not dealing with someone who has the Holy Spirit. Most, more than likely. We're going to get into that a little bit more. But more than likely, you're not dealing with someone. They, they might be just doing talking points. And they might actually believe in the Godhead, the King James Bible, but they can't let go of talking points. You know, PWC, Polly Wanted Cracker, parroting things. But someone who's a hardcore Trinitarian that actually believes that God the Father is separate from God the Son, and there's two separate gods... You're dealing with someone that doesn't have the Holy Spirit in them. They have a different spirit in them. Now, I put in here, you don't believe the perfect written word of God. You have made, you've forsaken it for satanic counterfeits and wisdom of men. And they have. He keeps going off the wisdom of men. Traditions of men. Grab, grabbing any book he wants. And we're going to get into this where he really goes after some far-fetched tradition of men. Okay, A fable. Remember, they shall be turned into fables. But I put the basic verses that a lot of us do, brothers and sisters Christ. John 8, 47, He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because you're not of God. 1 John 4, 5, They are of the world, therefore speak thee of the world, and the world heareth them. Notice I'm always quoting scripture. One Bible. One final authority. Okay. That's what we're supposed to do, brothers and sisters Christ. We're supposed to bring it back that there is a final authority, and it's in this final authority that you find the real Jesus Christ and the true plan of salvation. And if you reject this final authority, 9.99999% of the time, you reject the real Jesus Christ and the true plan of salvation. That's why we say the Bible version issue really can be a salvation issue. It really can. What Jesus do you believe in? And more than likely, you're believing in a false gospel. You have to merit salvation. You've got to be worthy of salvation. You can lose salvation. All right? uh, faith alone. It's not faith alone. It's repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. There's two things there. It's not faith alone. It's, ne it's never said faith alone. It's never been faith alone anywhere in the Bible. There's always repentance. Now, what are we justified by? Faith? Are you justified by works? And not the works of the law, but works. Like God will give a separate commandment apart from the works of the law saying, you need to do this if you want to live. No, you need to build the ark if you want to live. People in the time of Jacob's trouble, it isn't the body of Christ. 
But people in that time of Jacob's trouble, you need to not take the mark and worship the beast if you want to live. There are certain commands God would give that are works, but they're not works of the law. But you can either be justified by, the, by faith, or you're justified by works, or you're justified by both. Today we're justified by faith. The just shall live by faith. Live, that's the works that follow, true faith, true conversion, but we're justified by faith. Okay. Keep quoting the scriptures as the final authority. Don't give up on it. Just because this guy doesn't believe it, I believe it. I'm going to keep quoting the truth. But, but we're going to get in here. Sometimes when you, over, when you keep quoting truth to somebody who doesn't want it, you can start casting pearls before swine. That which is holy among the dogs. You know, you're answering a fool according to his folly, and you're going to become, become, be likened to him. We're going to get into those verses. But 1 Corinthians 1.18 for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Power of capital G, God. For it is written, I will destroy the wise, wisdom of the wise. Someday that man will have to answer that Jesus is God Almighty manifest in the flesh. If he does it today, he can get saved today. If he doesn't do it today, he's going to have to do it someday. And then probably wind up in the lake of fire to burn for all eternity if he doesn't do it today. Okay. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Satan. The lowercase g God. He's up there uh, accusing the brethren night and day, disputing with the Lord. Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Jesus is there right before him. Remember Paul, uh, Peter, or Philip. I'll get it, Philip. I'll get the right names. All P's. Paul, Peter, Philip. Philip, when he looks at Jesus Christ and says, Show us the Father and it suffices us. And Jesus looks at him and goes, well, you know, there's Jehovah, and, and then there's, and, you know, and he and starts going through how, you know, I'm not really God, uh, I'm God the Son, and uh, no, he looks at him and says, Have thou been so long time with me, and hast thou not known me, Philip? Philip said, Show us the Father, and Jesus is saying, He's been with you this whole time. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Philip didn't know that was God. He did later, but it's like Jesus saying, has, have, has thou, have I been a long time with you, and has thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. Why, show, why hast thou show us the Father? It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to preach the real Jesus Christ, seeking people to get saved. I want this man to get saved. I do. But this man is so messed up and perverted by scholarship and traditions of the world, philosophy, himself being the final authority. But my heartfelt desire is to see this man get saved and born again. Come to the knowledge of who Jesus really is before it's too late. I said, I pray you watch that video I linked on why I'm not Jehovah's Witness and the video on what Jesus, who is God, is saving you from. Time is running out. And I quoted that good verse, 2 Corinthians 6, 2, that says, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to get saved, because there's coming a day. If you don't believe that Jesus is God the Father manifest from the flesh, that He's the capital L Lord. If you don't do it now, you're going to be doing it later, and later will be too late. At the great white throne, it'll be too late. Depart from me, your curse, and everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Yeah, but I confess that you're Lord. You did it too late. Get him out of here. Throw him in. Throw him in the lake. I'm going to throw him in the lake. Now let's get over this. Uh, Jeho uh, he came back. He came out with a response to when I talked about Revelation 1.8. When did God die? He comes out with Jehovah is the Alpha and Omega. 
And he goes, Revelation 1.8 says, I am Alap, and the Tau, says the Lord Jehovah God. He who is and has been and is coming, the Almighty. And he goes, this is, he's getting it from the Arabic Bible in plain English. Okay, the Arabic Bible in plain English. That's almost like, like a contradiction. If it's an Arabic Bible, why isn't it in Arabic? You know, it's like Arabic Bible, plain English. Uh, no. And then he just leaves that. He just leaves that. That's his quote. And I'm like, wait a second. I quoted Revelation 1.8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the capital L, Lord, lowercase o-r-d, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Now, he ignored Revelation 18, when I, uh, chapter 1, verse 18, where I put it down, says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen, and have the keys of hell and death. This is clearly talking about God, so when did God die? He never answered it. He ignored it. Oh yeah, yeah, one eight is it's just talking about you know yeah, that's talking about Jehovah. Yeah, it's talking about Jehovah. What about verse 18? When did Jehovah die? He doesn't answer that. When was God's blood shed? He doesn't answer it. He ignores me. He ignores the scriptures. Then he comes out with a quote here saying, quote, like like I did sometimes where I do, oh PS, I'll do a PS. But he has a quote, he says, The most common error made by most translators in the last 3,500 years. I missed this. I thought, I, I, I didn't pay attention to how many years he put there. I just thought he was talking about, in my head, I thought all the Bible translators of today, like the last 2,000 years of today, uh, they just keep screwing up. And, you know, is there eliminate, their error is their elimination of heaven's real name of the Most High, Yahweh, Jehovah. And he's quoting some guy, it's not his words, he's quoting some guy, A, B, Traina, and the preference of the Holy Name Bible. So now he's quoting some guy from the Holy Name Bible, another Bible version. So he tried to use the King James Bible against me. He quotes the um, Aramaic Bible, and now he's quoting some Holy Name Bible. And he's going off traditions then, but I, I respond to him and said, that's a lie. If you watch 33rd book video on why I'm not a Jehovah's Witness, you will see that their own corrupt Greek and Hebrew text tells them to translate it to LORD, whether it's all caps or capital L, lowercase o-r-d. When that same word is used for Jesus, they don't translate it to Jehovah. They translate it LORD for the same name. You learn that in, the, in that book, Why I'm Not a Jehovah's Witness, that video, Why I'm Not a Jehovah's Witness. But they do not want Jesus to be God Almighty. But then I look back and go, oh, he said 3,500 years. He's not just saying for the past, you know, five, uh, four or 500 years. He's talking about, he's going back, even in the Old Testament, he's saying the Jewish people, those, those Levites that were custodians of the Scriptures, they even did it wrong. He's going back and saying the Bible's been wrong from the very beginning. The Bible's been wrong. That's what he's saying. We can't trust it. Trust man. Man knows what's right. What do we just read about the wisdom of this world? What God does to the wisdom of this world? He makes it foolish. Right? But he's going off traditions of men. Then he quotes another quote from a completely different Bible. Again, it says, In this translation, we have followed the Orthodox Jewish tradition and substituted the capital L Lord, and they have, for the name Yahweh. They go against the actual Hebrew, the old Hebrew. I want to say the original, but the faithful copies of the originals. They go against that and purposely replace Lord with Yahweh when the writings don't say that. It's what man wants. It's not what God said. It's what man wants. We want it to say Yahweh. So we're going to make up some fable, some fake story, and we're going to start messing with God's Word and changing it. Adding to it and subtracting from it. They subtract Lord and add Yahweh. Did God do that? No. And I, as you know, the whole point of Him doing this and them doing this is they don't want Jesus to be Jehovah. They don't want Jesus to be Lord God Almighty. They're tearing Jesus down, and that's the whole point. I got into it a few, uh, few years ago with some of the Yahweh people that like to change the name Jesus to Yahweh. They're attacking our Lord 
God Almighty, Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. They're attacking him, trying to do away with that name that's above all names. There's one meter between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, not Jehovah, not Yahweh. Jesus. He's given him a name that's above every name at the name of Jesus, not Yahweh, not Jehovah, not anything else you want to make up, Yahashua, Yeshua, at the name Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Okay. And he gets this quote, because they said that the Orthodox Jewish tradition substituted the Lord for the name Jehovah. And he prefaces the 1935 Bible, J.M. Power, Smith, and Edgar, and J. Goodspeed. It's, it's like he's quoting quotes from other Bible versions. He's gone, he's gone through so many Bible versions at this point. Four or five Bible versions. He has no final authority but himself. I say this, and he keeps going to try to justify not even following their own corrupt text. I would recommend you watch the study, if you haven't, by Brother 33rd book on why I'm not Jehovah's Witness. Because it's not just Jehovah's Witness doing it, this Yahweh movement's doing it. That's why I think this guy's a part of, maybe not a Jehovah's Witness, but he's part of this movement where we want to say Yahweh and we want to do away with the name Jesus. We want to do away with it and we're just going to say Yahweh. Yah Yahashua. Yeshua. It's satanic. It's so satanic agenda. It's a satanic movement to mess with God's book. It's always satanic. Then I just, you know, some of the times I do this sometimes, Brother Christ, I just throw in a P.S. P.S. here. Uh, P.S. I respond with P.S. John 20, 28. Because so I'm just going to keep throwing the scriptures at him because this is the final authority. But like I said, I did wrong. I should have just went straight to the Bible version issue and showed him that the King James Bible is God's perfect written word. If he rejects it, then you're on your own. There's nothing I can do for you. We don't have the same final authority. There's nothing I can do for you. And the only people he's going to reach is people who don't want a final authority. You know the kind of people we reach, brothers and sisters in Christ? Those who want a final authority. They want God to be the final authority. They want the truth. They have a love of the truth and they want the truth. So I put it here, P.S. John 20, 28. John 20, 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Capital G, God. Capital L, Lord, equals God. Also, Jesus did not correct him. I put that point in there. So notice Jesus didn't correct him. And the Old Testament, I mean, let's do the Revelation, because we've mentioned Revelation. You go to Revelation, when John tries to fall down at someone's feet that isn't Jesus, that isn't God Almighty manifest in the flesh, and tries to worship him, he says, do it not. I'm one of thy fellow brethren. There's angels in the Old Testament that wasn't Jesus Christ that said, don't worship me. But there was times where, like, uh, Joshua, when he sees the man with the sword standing there, he asks him, are you for us or for them? And he says, the, the angel says, uh, uh, the angel of the Lord says, the captain of the host of heaven have I come. And Joshua falls down and worships him. And that angel doesn't stop him. Why? Because that's God manifest in the flesh. Amen. But here you have that Jesus didn't correct him. This is Thomas. Remember the story of Thomas. Unless I see the hole in his hands or put my finger in his side, I will not believe. And when he finally did it, he says, My Lord, capital L Lord, Almighty God, Almighty, my Lord and my God. And he doesn't get corrected. Now Jesus tells him, Because thou hast seen, thou hast believed. Whole another study. You can, you can believe and see, but true faith only comes by not seeing. Faith, in the, the book of Hebrews, we learn the, the, the definition of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you see it, it's no longer faith. You can believe it, you can see and believe, but it's no longer faith. Whole another study. But once again, he calls him my capital L, lowercase o-r-d, Lord, and my God. That capital L, Lord, is, is a title and name for God in the Old Testament. God the Father. Jehovah. And yet Jesus is being called it by Thomas, and he actually flat out says, my God. And he doesn't correct him. Now here's his response. Here's his response, brothers of Christ. He comes back and he says, Jesus is a God, lowercase g God. 
He's a, he puts it in brackets, he's a lowercase g God. Or a divine being, but he's not almighty capital G God. What do we have here? The pagan trinity. Now we've told you that he, he's basically referencing the Aramaic Bible when he wants to quote scriptures, other than he tr thought he could use the King James Bible against me. Oh, ha, ha, I got, and he didn't. We've already proved how he, he's, he, he just can't even read the King James Bible. You need the Holy Spirit. It's a spiritually discerned book. But here he goes, John 1.1, 1, 1, Archbishop's Newcomer's New Testament improved version of 1809. Now he's not even using the Arabic Bible. Why? Because that probably doesn't tell him what he wants to hear. It probably says the same thing in John 1.1, 1, 1, that the word was God. They don't like that was God. Okay? I'm saying, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yeah, they don't like that. I just want to make sure I was saying it right. And this Bible perversion, Catholic Bible, the world, see, the capital W Word was in the beginning, and the capital W Word was with God, and the capital W Word was a God. And notice it says, and here it says, a capital G God. Not a lowercase g God, like he said in his comments. It's a capital G God. So now there are more than one capital G Gods. Well, according to the pagan trinity, there is. There's three capital G Gods. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's three capital G Gods. Yet, in my perfect written word of God, there's only one capital G God, the Father. There's only one God, one God, one God. What's that one God? The Father. But they're saying Jesus is a God, and they lower him down to a lowercase g God status. He also quotes John 1.1 1, 1 from a completely different Bible perversion, but a Bible version. Uh, Coptic text translation, Genet 2003. And he quotes it, it says, In the beginning existed the capital W word, and the word existed with God, and the word was a God. They take away was God. And put it into it. He's just a God, but he's not the God. Jesus is God, but he's not God. Like God the Son is not God the Father, but he's God. He's a God. He's just not God the Father. Now you have multiple gods. And they'll defend this. These people that don't have the Holy Spirit, they'll defend this to the death. Okay. Now this is like... Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six versions he's been using so far. How many versions have we been using, Brother Jesus Christ? How many versions have we been using? One. This is all I need. I don't need 50 minutes. When someone has to use multiple versions, you're dealing with somebody who doesn't want the truth. All right? I speak from experience. As a false convert, part of the faith alone crowd. I had multiple Bible versions. I had the NIV, the NASV, I had the Message, I had the New King James Bible. I had multiple versions. I've heard people preaching up in these Bible buildings using Bible perversions, preaching from multiple versions. Because they had to find the version they wanted that said what they wanted to hear that makes their teaching, their pushing their agenda, their narrative, to make it work. They couldn't do it with just one book. Have you noticed that? I just want to throw out that. Have you noticed that? All these doctrines of devils, all these false teachings, they have to use multiple Bible perversions most of the time. Why? Because it won't work with just one book. They don't want a final authority. It definitely doesn't work with the King James Bible. Okay. Once again, in the KJV, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, capital W Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, he quotes these ones that says, a God, but he doesn't keep going. Notice, I didn't stop there. I kept quoting verse 2 all the way through 5. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Who's the Him? Capital W Word. Jesus Christ. And without Him was not anything made that was made, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. They had no clue who Jesus was. We read that verse. By wisdom they knew not God. They didn't know who God was, and he's right there in front of them. Here it tells us Jesus is God, and people don't believe him. He's not, that Jesus is God the Father, manifest in the flesh. Well, he's a God, but he's not God Almighty. 
Okay? Now here's the question I have. The reason I went all the way down to verse 5, I asked, I said, how did Jesus Christ create himself if he's not Almighty God? There was nothing that's made that was made that was made by him. He made all things. Including he created his, um, incorrupt, uh, he gave up his incorruptible body that was there from the very beginning. And he made the likeness of sinful flesh. When he was born of a virgin, Mary. But he created all things. This is talking about the beginning. Before anything was created. There was not nothing that was created that wasn't created by him. That was made by him. How did Jesus create himself? I ask him that. How They never answer. They never answer. How did Jesus create himself? This is why the pagan trinity is so dangerous and can be, not always, a salvation issue. It's all about tearing Jesus down. Jesus is a lowercase g God, but not God the capital G God, the Father. There is only one capital G God, the Father, and if he's not capital G God, he's not God. But you want to pose him as a God, so then he becomes a lowercase g God. It's all about tearing Jesus down. Now, like I said before, I've come across brethren who believe the Godhead of the King James Bible. They believe God the Father is the soul, Jesus is the body, the Holy Spirit is the spirit, and in Him, Jesus Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. They believe that. They believe Jesus is God. Their problem is, is they can't let go of, the, of, of parroting these false terms, these false sayings. They still want to say Trinity. They still want to say God in three persons. They still want to say God the Son, God the Holy Spirit when it goes against the Bible. But you set them down. I've sat down with some brethren and I've talked with them and said, are you a Bible believer? And I really made it a hard issue. And I've had some of those brethren come back to me and say, you know what? I, was, I, thought, I, was very, I thought I was defending the Lord. I thought I was defending His Word. I was just being prideful and, 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 and kind of stubborn. And you're right. I need to say it God's way and I believe it the way God says it. Those people are saved. There's some that still are stubborn and won't let it go, but they believe the God had the King James Bible. I believe those people are saved. But you got ones like this guy that's hardcore. I don't believe Jesus is God. He's a God, but he's not Almighty God. And that's what the Trinity teaches. God the Son is not God the Father. He's a God, but he's not Almighty God. That's paganism. That's Satanism. I can't say it enough. When you have someone that believes hardcore the Trinity, when it actually, those words and those phrases, they actually believe what they mean, that God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit of His own, that Jesus has a body, soul, spirit of His own, separate from the Father, and the Holy Spirit has a body, soul, because it requires a body, soul, and spirit to be a person. That's the biblical definition of a person. And when you say God in three persons, you're saying each one has a body, soul, and spirit of His own. They're three separate gods. You're starting to promote multiple gods. And when you hit him up with it, well, he, because he, you have that chart. Uh, God the Son is not God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit is not God the Father. God the Father is not God the Son. But there's a line to the center that says, but they're all God. That's, that's paganism. That's Satanism. That's not what the Bible teaches. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. We're going to read it out this time. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. But to us there is but one capital G God, the Father. Us, who are saved, born again, Holy Spirit. No man speaking, uh, call Jesus a curse. He's just cursing Jesus and taking him down, we're going to find out, to the same level as Satan. He's cursing Jesus Christ. And he refuses to believe that Jesus Christ is the capital L Lord, by definition of the Bible, God Almighty. He refuses it. He doesn't believe that Jesus is the Lord. But to us there's but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one capital Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. One capital Lord, one capital G God. They're one and the same. Remember 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it says, In whom the lowercase g God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God should shine unto them. They lower Jesus down to a lowercase g God status, and what you're really doing is, is you're worshiping Satan. This man's worshiping Satan is Jesus Christ, an antichrist. The hardcore Trinitarians, they're worshiping Satan, 
as an antichrist, a counterfeit Jesus. This man just made Jesus equal to Satan. And that's what the Trinity does. No matter how much they try to use good words and fair speeches, they can't do it here, so they'll do it with good words and fair speeches using philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and they have no clue who the real Jesus Christ is. They're not after Christ. Okay. His next thing that he comes out with when I point this out to him, I said, you just lowered him to, to Satan. You made him equal with Satan. That's what the Mormons do. You know what? Uh, the Jehovah's Witness, they lower Jesus down to just being a, a created being like an angel. They make him out to be a Gabriel manifest in the flesh. They lower him down. They curse him by saying he's not God Almighty. They lower him down. This guy cursed him. The reason I keep saying curse him, remember the unpardonable sin when Jesus was only when Jesus was physically present on the earth. And it will not be forgiven in this world, nor the world to come. It's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. When you say Jesus isn't God the Father manifest in the flesh with the Holy Spirit in him, you say he has a devil in him, you lower him down to Satan's level. You curse him. That says Jesus is accursed. Okay. His next comment was, what did Jesus say at John 20, 17? Amplified Bible. This is like the seventh version he's used. And you know what? At this point, I said, I'm done. I'm done. I shouldn't have gotten into this. And I shouldn't have. Notice how long we've been talking about it, brothers and Christ. I was like, really shouldn't have gotten into it. I should have, it should have been a simple response of, here's the Bible version issue. And I have all these links that I link, the Bible version is. Peter Ruckman did a good video. Uh, King James Video Ministries, back when it was King James Video Ministries, has a good playlist on the Bible version issue. Uh, 33rd Book has a good uh, videos on the Bible version issue. And I link some of this stuff to them. And that's what I should have done from the very beginning. Why? Because his final authority, he's got a... His, his, remember how I joke around saying this, but it's, there's truth in it. It's called the self-entity. Well, what do you call self? You have the trinity, the pagan trinity, that's three. Then you have the self-entity. Self his final authority is two trinities. <laughs> self-entity... And world entity, if you want to say it like that. But the self entity, it's me, myself, and I. That's his first three foundations for salve, uh, for um, truth, final authority. Me, myself, and I. The other trinity he has that's his final authority is philosophy, traditions of men, rudiments of the world. And he doesn't know Christ. This man has no clue who Jesus Christ is. And I'm realizing that a lot of these false religions, Bible perversionists, pre, uh, the, the vehemently defend the, the, the pagan trinity, and everything, they don't know who Jesus Christ is. The real Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, manifest in the flesh. The Jesus Christ, who is God, God's body, that God died on the cross. The Jesus Christ, that when his blood was shed, it's God the Father's blood that was shed. God manifest in the flesh. They don't know who the real Jesus Christ is. Because they've got to break that, that pride and that self-worth and I'm the final authority and they have to give that up and fall on their knees before the real Jesus Christ who is God the Father and say, you're the final authority. Show me where I'm a sinner. You know, true biblical repentance, having sorrow for your sins that you've sinned against God, throwing them at the foot of the cross, believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, confessing both in prayer and asking God to save you. And it's only God's blood that can save you and wash your sins away. But what gets in the way? These entities, these self-entities, these uh, world entities, philosophy, traditions of men, rudiments of the world. They don't want to submit themselves to God. Remember the Bible says they haven't submitted themselves to the righteousness of God? Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. Now this man here, it seems like 2 Timothy 3, 7. This is a good example of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning. He's going all throughout the world. Traditions of men, rudiments of the world, philosophy, different Bible versions and everything. And he's ever learning and he'll never come to the knowledge of the truth. Not until he does a solid study on the Bible version issue with 
the attitude that I want the truth. Because there's some who claim they've done the study, they haven't. They just claim they have. Because anybody who wants the truth and says, Lord, I want the truth. I need the truth. I want the truth. I have a love of the truth. I need the truth. And they do a solid study on the Bible version issue. They always come to the King James Bible and say, this is it. This is God's perfect written word in English. Every time. The ones that don't are the ones who don't do a solid study. They don't want to. They just walk. They say they don't. They watch. They listen to this side that says the King James Bible isn't the Word of God, and that's it. Okay, then the Bible, the King James Bible, isn't the Word of God. They don't listen to the side that says it is, and listen to the guy that says it isn't. I've listened to both sides. This side's arguments fall flat. These, these truth and foundations, these facts and truth where the King James Bible is God's perfect written word, they hold up. I've listened to both sides. I've studied the issue. The King James Bible is God's perfect written word. Matthew 15, 14, this is where I failed. 15, 14, let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into a ditch. I waste a lot of time in this. When the pro his number one problem is, is he has he had, God and his perfect written word is not his final authority. God's not the final authority in this man's life. He doesn't have the Holy Spirit. That's the second problem. He's not truly saved according to this book, according to God through his perfect written word. Matthew seven six says, "Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet." And turn again and rend you. I needed to end this before I got rended. At that point, when he did another Bible ver perversion, Amplified Bible, I just linked the Bible version issue, which is what I should have done from the very beginning. When he started using Bible perversions, you can't win any arguments with people who don't have a final authority. And it's not about winning. It's about, I'm talking about winning them to the truth, getting them over to the truth. You'll never do it until they have the acknowledgement that, hey, this is the perfect written word of God. Now you can talk to them. Now you can win them. To, to the real Jesus Christ. And right. the, these last days when people are perverted by false religions. If you came across someone who's never heard the Bible, never heard of Jesus Christ, you can preach Jesus Christ to them from the King James Bible and win someone to Christ, and afterwards then they come to the knowledge that, hey, this is God's perfect written word. But today, everyone's been tainted by false religions and false Bibles. Everyone has. You really gotta hit them. You gotta hit the Bible version issue. The two ways to say so on Bible version issue, uh, as far as final, there is a final authority. There is a perfect written word of God, and the perfect written word of God says you have to repent. That's the second thing to hit people with today: repentance, true biblical repentance, having sorrow in your heart for sinning against God. King David was sorry for his sins. Are you? A lot of these faith alone people you come across, they're not sorry for their sins. They love their sins. They covet their sins. They're the final authority. They love doing things their way. The world's way. Now, answering a fool. When somebody wants truth, Proverbs 26, 5. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceits. When someone wants truth, and they're, and they're asking questions that are, you know, foolish questions bad questions, and you see something in them, that's that spirit of discernment, the spiritual discernment, you see something in them that wants the truth, and you see that you're dealing with someone who's sincere, they want the truth, they've just been really messed up by the world, by philosophy, by scholarship, been really messed up. So then you try to answer it because you see that they want the truth, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Keep going down that road thinking that his way is the right way when it's not the right way. Then you go back a verse where it says Proverbs 26, 4. This Proverbs 26, 4 is for someone who hates the truth and doesn't want the truth. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. We're going back and forth, and I'm becoming like him where I'm almost being okay with Bible perversions, with no final authority, because he doesn't have a final authority. I do, but when you put us both together and we're doing this conversation, it's like there's no final authority. In the conversation as a whole. We both need to have the same authority, and we don't. Now you're answering a fool according to his folly, lest, lest thou also be like unto him. And that's their whole point. 
to get us away from this being the final authority and having a discussion and arguing about all kinds of authorities, man being authority, the world being authority, philosophy being the authority, traditions of men being the authority. They're not the final authority. This is the final authority. And they get us away from this. They get us away from preaching truth to people who want the truth. So answer not a fool or answer a fool. If someone comes to you wanting the truth, then give them the truth. If someone comes to you and it just you realize they don't want the truth, they're here just to waste your time, they're here to distract you, let them alone. Look for someone who does want the truth. And when you get into a situation like this, brothers and sisters in Christ, make sure that, don't, don't, don't do what I did, because we did this whole video, don't do what I did, okay, and not follow the three rules. He's, not a, he's, he's a Bible perversionist. So all I need to talk to him about is the Bible version. Where to get God's perfect written word. Final, what final authority is. And if there is no final authority, authority, we're all lost. We need final authority. It's the only way to find God's word and what God wants and doing things God's way. If there's a final authority and God's that final authority through his perfect written word. Okay. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Three times in the four gospels. You know, time and time again. Okay, it's his word that matters. Now, I want to finish this with a hymn real quick, Brothers of Christ, and this is another hymn based off this study. Remember what uh, Thomas said. When he saw the holes in his hands, the scars in his hands, and the hole in his side, he said, My Lord and my God. Okay. We're going to sing the old hymn, How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come, with shouts of acclamation, and take me home, with joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow, with humble adoration, and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Brothers and sisters of Christ, there's coming a day where we're going to stand before Jesus Christ and we're going to fall down and say, My God, how great thou art before Jesus Christ. 
My capital G God, how great thou art. And if you're watching this and you still believe in the pagan trinity hardcore, or you're like this man, you're into the Yeshua, Yahashua, replacing Jesus Christ and downplaying Jesus Christ where he's not God the Father manifest in the flesh, there's coming a day where you're going to have to answer to, to him and you're going to claim that he is capital L Lord. He's God Almighty, the Almighty God. And then you're going to get tossed in the lake of fire. Best to do it now than later. Rather do it now than later. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Thank you for praying for me, Brother Sis Christ, and my usefulness in ministry. And I'm praying for you, Brother Sis Christ, when it comes to reaching people for the truth. Uh, God, uh, being a living witness and a verbal witness. Gospel tracting. Telling people of the real Jesus Christ. We need to keep going until Jesus says it's not enough and he calls us home. That day of Christ, that blessed hope, the day of redemption, where we get caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.